We live on a sailboat, and we've been to a lot of places so far. We manage to find interesting things to see and do wherever we go, but these things, they don't just happen. So today, we're gonna go do another thing. We're gonna go explore a blue hole tucked back at the back of the bay we're anchored in. When we're figuring out this is what we're gonna do today, it got me thinking. We've done a ton of things since we got to the Bahamas, but we don't randomly stumble upon them. We had to do a lot of planning and figuring things out to find this stuff. So let me back up a little bit. We live on a sailboat and we are constantly on the move. We rarely stay at one anchorage more than a couple of days. So how do we do that? How do we discover interesting things to do and see in each place that we set anchor? We don't just hop in the dinghy and drive around aimlessly looking for cool stuff, right? Generally, we rely on four different methods to find interesting stuff. Now, the first thing we do is we look at like a cruising guide or uh, charts. Um, and both of these kinds of books have something interesting in them about generally the most popular places to see. Wherever you go, there's usually a cruising guide written for that area. And in some cases, they've written cruising guides just for specific islands. Like here in the Bahamas, we had a cruising guide just for Long Island, which was really helpful and had a lot of really interesting things to go see and do. Now, along with the cruising guides, we look online, we go to YouTube and search up the places where we're going and, and more often than not, somebody will have made a video of that place and there will be some interesting stuff to find that way. A lot of the places we visit have Facebook groups created for them so that people who are visiting can share information about where they can go and what they can go do. Online, you might find some of the things that aren't in the guidebooks. You'll find more out of the way things and, and harder to get to things, but they'll also be just as interesting. Now, a third method that we use is talking to locals. It sounds silly, but if you go ask a local what you should go see on their island or in their town, they'll tell you, and they'll tell you really interesting stuff. When we were at Cat Island, we visited with a lady at a resort who told us about this place called the Healing Pond, pointed us to a guy who could drive us there, and we ended up spending a couple of hours in something sort of like the Dead Sea in the middle of this island. It was really neat. And it wasn't in any guidebook or online that we could find. So you might find some interesting nuggets just by talking to the locals. Now the last method that we use to find interesting stuff is to just look at the geography. You look at a map, you look at Google Earth and, and try to find something interesting. You can find mangrove rivers and coral reefs and blue holes and cliffs just by looking from above. And so we'll use that if we're in an especially remote area like we are today. That's how we found the blue hole that we're visiting. It was on the map. And we know that if you go to a blue hole, generally there's gonna be some life around it. And so that's why we're gonna go explore it. This is the Big Boyle Blue Hole. And it turns out it has a bit of a tragic history. Three untrained open water divers ran out of air exploring the hole back in 1994. According to what I could find online, they had only two guidelines, single tanks with no backups, no knives, no depth gauge. There's a cave system down there, and they made it about 150 feet in. One of the bodies was found stuck in a guideline, and another was recovered 150 feet off the main channel in a side tunnel. That must have been awful. Needless to say, we stayed on the surface. So that's how we find stuff. And today, it worked out great. We got to see some stuff that not a lot of people have seen before. We discovered an interesting story about some people who passed away exploring the caves that we were swimming over. And if you're ever in the bite of old Robinson and the Abacos, I'd suggest going and checking this out. I'm sure we'll stumble upon some new ways to find cool things as we go along, but it'll probably be a variation of the four things that I talked about before. If you put a little time and effort into researching where you're going, you'll find amazing things and have great experiences. As always, thank you for watching. Follow us on Instagram. I'm almost beating William in followers, so following would be a big help. And we'll see you next week.